going on world ds1 ross and i'm back shout out to everybody thanks for supporting sheep stay sleep tv very much appreciated thanks for taking your time out for listening shout out to all y'all thanks for supporting um independent black man media that's very much appreciated also and thanks for tuning in to the black history month series of 2019 shout out to y'all for that um if y'all haven't yet go check out the father of black history month i did that a little earlier go check that out that's carter g woodson Go check out the life of the black historian Carter G. Woodson. He's the one who created Black History Month. Black History Month was um, coined by him. So y'all go check that out. Carter G. Woodson. And um, tonight I'm here with the second black historian that's not spoken about this guy here was somebody that uh you know most people never even mentions um this is thomas l jennings um if you go and check out last year's black history month series that's black history month of 2018 Go and check that out. I have a lot of black inventors. Um, a lot of us don't have the correct history on inventions in the world. And last year when I delved into our black inventors, man, we created 95, if not 100% of the stuff that we use every day. You know, and of course, America doesn't give us the proper credit, but with the Internet, it's our job to find out who created what is our job. We we have the resources to do the research. You know, so. Thomas L. Jennings. He's the father of. The dry cleaning process. You know, everybody goes to the cleaners and they get they, you know, they clothes cleaned and starched and, you know, put together. But a lot of us didn't know that the whole process was created by a black man. A lot of us like to say, well, what have black men done for black people? What have black men done? We've done a whole lot. Stay tuned for this Black History Month series of 2019. If y'all are interested in knowing what we have done for this world and for our people. If you want to know something, some more, go and check out Black History Month series of 2017 and 2018 all you have to do is go to my channel and go to the playlist section they're in the playlist shout out to everybody that's tuned in right now welcome to everyone it's very much appreciate y'all tuning in and um tonight again we will be getting into a, a another black inventor this is the first black inventor I'm gonna speak about here in this month series, the Black History Month series of 2019, right here on Sheep Stay Sleep TV. We got the father of dry cleaning, Thomas L. Jennings. Thomas L. Jennings. Yes, the, the, the industry that is ran by the Asians now, the dry cleaning industry, 
was started by a black man. So let's get into who Thomas L. Jennings was and let's find out, um, you know, what did he actually do and how did he come up with this? Thomas L. Jennings was an African-American tradesman and an abolitionist. He's a tradesman and he's an abolitionist, an abolitionist. Thomas L. Jennings was born free to a free African-American family in New York City. So Thomas L. Jennings was born into a free family. So his family was were not slaves. They were free black folks. And he's from my city, New York City. Shout out to the Big Apple. Thomas L. Jennings was born free to a free African-American family in New York City. As a youth, he learned a trade as a tailor. So he was a guy who learned how to work with his hands. And he knew how to work with machinery. He was an um, industrious kind of guy, what we call blue collar. He built a business and married a woman named Elizabeth, who was born in 1798 in Delaware, into slavery. So his wife come from a slave family, but she was married to a free man. Under New York's gradual abolition law of 1799, she was converted to the status of a independent, uh, indentured servant and was not eligible for full emancipation until 1827. Children born to slave mothers before 1827 were considered to be born free, but were required to serve apprenticeships to the mother's masters until they reach their mid to late 20s. So this is interesting about this guy right here. You know, even though I, I picked Thomas Jennings because he was an inventor, his life, just this, just this small part of his life, dealing with his wife who was born a slave and you know, her children happened to, um, even though her children will be born free, they will still have to work as slaves because their mother is, is considered uh, an indentured servant. So that's interesting. That's interesting. He and his wife had three children. Matilda, Elizabeth, and James. Matilda was a dressmaker. She was married to a mason. Elizabeth was a wife and James was a school teacher. So they 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 had some their children, you know, panned out pretty good. Jennings built a business as a tailor and was well respected in the community. He spent his early earnings on legal fees to purchase his wife and some of their children out of slavery. Oh, black, black men, they ain't never did nothing for black women. Really? Here it is, this man took the money that he was making in his career to pay for the freedom of his children and his wife. Oh, black, black men, they don't care about black women. Really? This is a free man. Why would he marry a, a slave woman? 
Hmm? Why would he marry a woman who was a slave and he was a free man? He could have went and got up with a free woman. Think about that. He could have went and got up with a free woman. He took his money and went to purchase his wife and some of his children out of slavery. <clears throat> but black men don't do real stuff. Okay. Their daughter, Elizabeth, was born free in March 1827 and became a school teacher and a church organist. Jennings also supported the abolitionist movement and became active in working for civil rights of free African Americans. So even though he was born a free man, he still has civil rights issues, even though he wasn't a slave. He wasn't a slave, but he still had to fight for civil rights. So basically, he was still being called a Negro. He was still being treated as a Negro. Isn't that interesting? So let's continue. He was active on issues related to immigration to other countries opposing colonization in Africa as proposed by the American Colonization Society and supporting expansion of suffrage for African-American men. Thomas Jennings was the first African-American to receive a patent on March 3rd, 1821. His patent was for a dry cleaning process called dry scouring. Thomas Jennings' dry scouring technique created modern day dry cleaning. So what we call today dry cleaning, they called it dry scouring back then. And he was the first African-American to receive a patent. Now, if y'all go back to my 2018 Black History Month series and check out Granville T. Woods. He was a black man that had over a hundred patents. In his time. But as we can see, the first black man who had a patent in America was Thomas Jennings. Was Thomas Jennings. Jennings was a leader in the cause of abolitionism and African-American civil rights after his daughter elizabeth was forcibly removed from a white a whites only street car in new york city he organized a movement against racial segregation in public transit in the city see so us you know um creating movements and and um, not riding the buses and stuff like that. That stuff Ben was going on. That that went on way before the um the bus boycott with Dr. King and all of them. Elizabeth Jennings won her case in 1855. So she won and they proved that they was being racially, racially segregated against.
Its members organized additional challenges to discrimination and segregation and gained legal representation to take cases to court. A decade after Elizabeth Jennings won her case, New York City streetcar companies stopped practicing segregation. New now let's let's pay attention to this. If you're from New York, or if you've been to New York, you notice one of the one of the trademarks of New York City is what? The New York City taxis. Back then they were called streetcars because in New York the cabs, our cabs run up and down the streets. 24 7. That's why New York is the city that never sleeps. Because you can get on a train, you can get on a bus. Trans public transportation never stops in New York City. It's 24 7. It's 24. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never stops. So these streetcar companies. That that's being spoken about later on turned into the yellow cab service. All these yellow taxis you see riding up and down New York City streets. That came from the streetcar companies. And the companies stopped practicing segregation because. Back in those times, they could openly tell you, you can't get in my car, Negro. But later on, and even still today, it's still some um some type of um prejudice towards towards black people who standing on the corner trying to catch a cab. See, back then they were purposely segregating. The companies. That's why it was she she they pulled her out of a whites only car because she was black in a whites only car. But up until the time when I when I was, you know, a young boy, my dad had a problem with catching a cab on the corner. We couldn't stand on the corner and, and flag down a cab. My mom would have to flag the cab because a lot of the cabs still practice prejudice. And it, it's not telling you this is a white cab anymore where you can't get in it, but they still treat you as such. You see? So there's no different. It's just that it's not out in the open anymore. That's all it is. And they like to make you feel, they like to make you think that you should feel more comfortable now because it's not out in the open. When it's actually still the same thing at the end of the day. I'm not looking at the chat room, but shout out to everybody in the chat. Do me a favor and please share this so people can um, understand what this Black History Month series thing is all about and let them get to know who Thomas Jennings was. Let's get some more information on Thomas Jennings. Thomas Jennings was the first black person to ever receive a patent, but his life should serve as an example of what was and what could have been for black people in the earliest years of the United States. Thomas Jennings was born in 1791 and worked in a number of jobs before focusing on what would become his chosen career as a tailor. Jennings' skills were so admired that people near and far came to him to alter or custom tailor items of clothing for them. Eventually, reputation grew such that he was able to open his own store on Church Street, which grew into one of the largest clothing stores in New York City. 
Now, Church Street is in Lower Manhattan, if y'all don't know. Church Street is Lower Manhattan in New York City. Jennings, of course, found that many of his customers were dismayed when their clothing became soiled and because of the material used, were unable to use conventional means to clean them. Conventional methods would often ruin the fabric, leaving the person to either continue wearing the items in their soiled condition or to simply discard them. While this would have provided a boon to his business through increased sales, Jennings also hated to see the items which he worked so hard to create thrown away. He thus set out experimenting with different solutions and cleaning agents, testing them on various fabrics until he found the right combination to effectively treat and clean them. He called his method dry scouring. And it is the process that we now refer to as dry cleaning. In 1820, Jennings applied for a patent for his dry scouring process. In light of the times, he was fortunate that he was a free man born in the United States and thus an American citizen. Under the United States Patent Laws of 1793, that was later revised in 1836, a person must sign an oath or declaration stating that they were a citizen of the United States. While there were apparently provisions through which a slave could enjoy patent protection, the ability of a slave to seek out, receive, and defend a patent was unlikely. Later in 1958, the patent office changed the laws, stating that since slaves were not citizens, they could not hold a patent. Furthermore, the court, in the famous case Oscar Stewart v. Ned, case said that the slave owner not being the true inventor could not apply for a patent either that showed see that just showed right there that a lot of the stuff that we created even in slavery they weren't able to hold the patents but they were making a lot of money off of things we were creating that proved it right there in true irony, when many of the southern states succeeded from the Union to form the Confederate States of America, CSA President Jefferson Davis signed into law legislation permitting slaves to hold patents. For Jennings, none of this mattered because, as a free man, not only was he able to receive a patent in 1821, but he was also able to utilize it for his financial gain. In fact, he made a fortune. What makes Jennings noteworthy is not just that he was an entrepreneur or that he received a patent, or even the fact that he became very wealthy. What was noteworthy is that he took a vast amount of the proceeds of his business and poured it into abolitionist activities throughout the Northeast. In fact, in 1831, he became the assistant secretary for the first annual convention of the people of color in Philadelphia. He passed this sense of self-worth to his daughter Elizabeth. Because of her father's prominence and wealth, she was able to obtain the best representation and hired the law firm Colvin Parker. That was for her case that I talked about earlier.
Thomas Jennings died in 1859 and will go down in history as the first black person to obtain a patent. Did y'all hear that? He was the first black person to obtain a patent. So not only was he able to make a fortune off of the fact that he he created the dry cleaning process, but he was the first African American to a patent. So he was able to patent the process and no one was able to take it from him. But he should he should rather be seen as an example of a citizen who made the best of his life and sought to use his good fortune to make life better for those around him. You see? And this is the problem that we have now with a lot of wealthy black people. They're not willing to make life better for their people that's around them. And when I say people that's around them is not just your family, but make life better for your race in general, meaning do things in society so it can trickle down to your people. This man created the dry cleaning process, but today the Asians run that industry. Why is that? I don't understand that. Why does the Asians control the industry that we created? That a black man got wealthy from and let's remember, he was a free black man. So all of our black historians of prominence were not slaves and did not come from slaves. He was a free black man. He married a slave woman and then spent the money to purchase his wife. See, that should be noted just as much as the fact that he's the father of dry cleaning. So when we talk about Thomas L. Jennings, we should not just talk about his accomplishments, but we should talk about the type of person he was. See, a lot of us, we don't, we don't focus on that because we come from poverty. So a lot of us, we just focus on the fact that we need to find a way to make money. But this man was a man of, of principle. He had integrity. It was not just about him being a wealthy man. It was about what he did with his wealth. And a lot of a lot of wealthy, well, I can't say wealthy, but extremely rich black people today that we see, they do not use their fortune to make black life better, to make the black experience for the upcoming generations better. A lot of our um, rich black folks don't even think like that. We don't even think how could we make, how could we create things in society that's going to make our children's children's children life better. You see? And this is something that we need to focus on. We don't need to just worry about our children now. What about your children's children, children? 
Do you ever think about what the world is going to look like? What society is going to be when their children are, are, are grown? I think about that now. How would how would people in society be and what type of interactions will be going on when my when my grandchildren become grownups and they have children? You see, this is why we need to teach the proper black history. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I just started looking at the chat. I appreciate all y'all for tuning in. And no, we do not own our talents. You're exactly right, um, Vonda. You're exactly right. And it's because we won't take the proper steps to do so. Because with all the stuff that Thomas Jennings had to deal with, that didn't stop him from patenting his process. That didn't stop Granville T. Woods back in the in the late 1800s, in the early 1900s, to have over 100 patents. So there's no excuse for us now. There's no excuse. If them people can do it in the hostile times of society, it, there should be no excuses now for us. You know, a lot of a lot of us make excuses on why we don't own a lot of shit. Because a lot of us don't take the steps to own things. A lot of us don't take the proper steps in or even are interested in incorporating themselves. Because for so long. You know, we've been. um. We've been marginalized by corporations and all of these things dealing with, with with the United States. The United States itself is a corporation. So this is what um, discourages black people from incorporating themselves. But this is what we have to do. This is what our black historians fought for us to do. Not for us to be outside of the system, but for us to be a part of it. For, for us to get our proper due, for us to get our proper respect on the things that we've done in society. Those things have to be noted. Those things need to be recognized by our children. Because it gives them a sense of hope. It gives them it gives them confidence to say, I can do this despite this. Because why did these black people in these time periods accomplish so much? And we not doing shit. We're not a we're accomplishing the, the least amount of things. With the less amount of pressure. This man had to take money to fight a case because they snatched his daughter out of a cab that had whites only on it. This is the type of stuff they had to deal with. You couldn't drink at certain water fountains. You rolled on certain buses. We don't have to deal with that. So what is our excuse for not incorporating and becoming corporate entities and having LLCs and learning how to operate in the system? A lot of us talk about creating a system outside of the system. How if you don't even know how the system works? You can't create a system. You can't create your own system without having experience with systems, period. When this man thought of creating the dry scouring process, 
he didn't he didn't do that with with um with race in mind. He did it from a business perspective. He's a businessman. I need to find a way to accommodate my customers on all levels because not only did he save the money, but he created an opportunity for himself to make even more money because he started out as a tailor. But when the clothes got so dirty and the fabric was damaged, a lot of them threw their stuff away. So he invented a new process. You see? And to this day, we take our clothes to the goddamn dry cleaners. To this day. We got some people in our family who don't even wash they who don't even wash their jeans and shirts and stuff like that. They take everything to the cleaners. So we have to admire our black history. We have to really see the importance in it. And it's for us, it's, it's for us and our children to understand what we've created and how we have affected the world. And yes, society feels if this society feels as if we deserve everything without working for it. Uh, that's what they say about us, Teresa. But the world know that that's not true. Black people work for everything they got. How they gonna tell us we didn't work for nothing when we created every goddamn thing? We created it. How the hell we didn't work? We created it. We created Black History Month. I talked about that. My last show, Carter G. Woodson. We created Black History Month. We created it. <laughs> so that's just some, some, some BS propaganda that they like to tell us so we can further look down on ourselves. Black people ain't goddamn lazy. How we lazy when we created and built every damn thing? How are we lazy? And we still doing it to this day. They even, they even got black men and they got black men and women in jails building. Some of the products that we're using, some of these electronics and stuff that we using, the, the, the motherboards and some of the um knobs and stuff like that, they're being created in prisons. Come on. American society was built on our backs. They know that. <laughs> they know it. The one thing that we created that we like to, you know, um, talk bad about when, when it's convenient is hip hop. But hip hop is the language of the entire world. You can go anywhere across this goddamn world. And if you know how to perform hip hop, you, can, you will be accepted. If you know certain hip hop songs, you'll be accepted in certain groups and certain places across the world. So how the hell black people didn't work? That's just something they like to tell us, Teresa. So we could feel like we lazy. We ain't goddamn lazy. We built everything. And us as black people need to stop feeding that narrative and stop believing that narrative. Definitely. And I and I wasn't saying that you was, you know, you were saying that we were lazy. What I was saying was that comment that you made is something 
is that is is something that the propaganda machine feeds to us and feeds to everybody else in society about black people. I wasn't saying that you were saying that in particular. But shout out to you, Teresa. Shout out to the underrated darkness. Shout out to Handel and Jones. Shout out to the Thunder God, Zeus Flippy. Shout out to my brother Suge on the check-in. Shout out to Miss Vonda Harris. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to the beautiful Afrocentric Anatomy TV. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to Sheila Furness. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to Candy. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Shout out to King Wage. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to the Eat Kitchen. I appreciate you. Good evening to you. Shout out to Heels In on the check-in again. That's family. Shout out to everybody that's tuning in. Shout out to Old Reliable. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight. Um, like I said, um, if you if you missed the dissertation, um, you might have to catch the playback. Thomas L. Jennings, the father of dry cleaning. Also, check out the first black historian, Carter G. Woodson. He is the father of Black History Month. He is the one who coined that term from something that he created. So y'all go check out Carter G. Woodson. That was our first Black historian here on this series. And this is number two, Thomas L. Jennings, the father of dry cleaning. Y'all for tuning in. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you smash that like button, um, share the show. And um, if you would like to donate, the links are in the description. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight, family. I will be back tomorrow with two more of our black historians for this Black History Month series of 2019. I will be back tomorrow, family. So I appreciate all the love and the support. Leave your comments down in the description. And um, let me know how you feel about this video. Let me know how you feel about the uh, Black History Month series in general. If you haven't yet, go check them out now. They're in the playlist section of um, my channel. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Much love, and I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Peace.